my crafty loving friends. Welcome to Repurpose My Way. I'm Shelly. I'm going to share three secrets to inspiring creative Christmas decor on a budget. My friend Sandy at Sandy's Country Crafts made some really cute uh, candy canes. Just the stick ones, not the ones with the curves on them. And she put them in a mason jar. Super cute. I'll link that down in my description so you guys can check it out if you haven't seen it. Um, I want to make some to make like bowl fillers. So I have a bunch of these dowels. They're 30 inches long. So I'm going to cut them down. I'm going to put my tape out. This is going to be super simple. Put my tape out. I'm going to put my the end of my dowel all the way to the end of the tape, which I know you can't see. But I'm going to go <clears throat> six inches, six five-inch ones, or five six-inch ones. So I'm going to do the six-inch because we're going to keep it odd numbers. So I'm going to do six, 12. I'm just going to put a line, 18. It's a little bit off because I'm not right over it, and 24. So I'm going to make four cuts and get five of these pieces and we're gonna make bowl fillers with them and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do using Sandy's Sandy's idea. Gill, bandsaw, and I am just going to take my lines and line them up with my blade here. I'm gonna flip it on. You can purchase these dowels at Woodpecker Crafts. I'll leave a link down in the description. It's just a little bit over a dollar for a 36 inch long dowel. I'd say that's pretty budget friendly. So I have three bundles of five that I'm gonna do up. I'm gonna set those over here. I have some twine, cause that's how I'm gonna tie them together. And I have material. Now, a lot of times inspiration for me is whether I have the, the proper materials for whatever I'm working on or whatever the project may be. And sometimes the ease of it or just, you know, do you like the looks of it? So this is this hits like all three of them. I have the material, same I think is what Sandy had pretty much. I have the dowels, we've got all kinds of these. I have twine. Um, I didn't wanna make exactly what made, Sandy made even though it's super cute. It's in a mason jar, a little small one. She put them in there with a cute little candy label on it. I'm gonna do uh, a tag on mine. So they're gonna be tied in a bundle like a bowl filler and do a tag on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start cutting my material in strips. Now when I start my kind of rolling my fabric on, I'm gonna start at the very top to make sure that it's covered. And I'm gonna go at an angle, I'm just gonna glue at the very top. And then I'm gonna go around at an angle instead of straight across, I'm gonna try and get those stripes to go down around. And I also really like how the frayed edges stick out so on one side of my fabric it's more frayed than the other side so I tried to make sure that was upright so that my as you can see here my little frays are sticking out those are going to come in handy later on and I'll show you why but it just gives it a little more of a rustic primitive look too um, and so I think it works to my advantage here so I just try to keep unrolling it, unraveling it because it wants to ravel up on me and make sure that those little frayed edges are sticking out there. Now once I get done twisting my fabric around, I am going to glue down at the bottom as well. So I didn't use any glue 
at all in the middle of it just glued the top and gluing the bottom then I'm just cutting off any extra excess and making sure it's glued down really well and then I'm going to move on and do all the rest of them the next thing I want to do is make some Mod Podge grubby mix and it is starts with this little cup with a little bit of Mod Podge and then some of my grubby mix or if you don't have grubby mix you could use just cinnamon and then I'm going to take a little bit of antique wax just it doesn't take a lot just a tiny bit and I'm going to mix it in to my Mod Podge and grubby mix mixture. I'm going to just smooth it up and get it mixed in real good and I had printed off these labels from Etsy. I'll leave a link to the shop that I purchased these at. Downloaded them onto regular printer paper. And I want to add them to a piece of cloth and just a scrap piece. And then uh, I want to grubby them up, but I want it to stiffen up a little bit. So I thought I'll just mix my Mod Podge and my antique wax together and that way it'll stick it will uh, get the grubby mix all in there too and just make a really nice distressed aged look on my piece I tore off my fabric and then added my grubby Mod Podge on there onto the fabric and then I also put it onto my paper so that would stick and of course give it that grubby look and I'm just sticking it on there and then I'll go over the top with the grubby mix and make sure that the frayed edges are all uh, have all that mix in there and the, you'll also see possibly not sure uh, but you'll see the uh, spice mix the grubby mix that I actually put in um, and so you'll get a little bit of cinnamon and a little bit of coffee and I'm just, just trying to age this piece and give it all a cohesive look. Then I will move on to my uh, peppermint sticks. And this is kind of a dry brush process. I want to not get it really dark. Uh, there is going to be spots where my brush is going to have more grubby mix on it and it will get darker. But this really worked well to age this piece. This is why I like the frayed edges on my fabric to be out because it catches those frays and it gives it a really great aged look and it's just so simple, just brush it on. So now that everything is pretty much dry, I just go ahead and put a hole in my tag so that I can tie that on. And then I'm going to take my peppermint sticks and I'm going to glue them to, together. It'll help them stay together once I tie them and they won't fall apart. And I think this gives it a nice uh, sturdy feel too to them. So I'm just gluing those edges together and then gluing the tops and the bottoms together. And then I'm going to grubby up my string. I want my string to be a little grubbied up as well. So I'm just going to take that in a plate and run, run it through my brush and get that all nice and grubbied up as well. I'm then going to tie my little tag on and uh, tie it up with a bow at the top. And then I decided I wanted to add a little greenery so I'm going to do that as well.
this hanging basket. It's a just a pocket basket. It's really very solidly made. It's well made. It has this little Christmas tree on the front that I thought was really pretty. And it was only a couple dollars at the Goodwill. So I wanted to bring this home and make a really pretty door hanging uh, for the holidays. So I grabbed up, I when I had gone to a yard sale this past summer, I picked up a box of garland for $2. It was a whole bunch. I don't know how many feet, but it was several feet. And I've just been cutting little pieces off it to use as filler in my different uh, different things that I do for Christmas. So I just cut off three of those uh, off that garland and I'm sticking them inside the basket to give me my greenery. So this is going to be my base. I'm going to start with this and tuck that in and it will be nice and tight so it won't fall out. I got these two little sprigs of greenery and berries from I think it was Walmart. I picked up a few of them. So I am just going to tuck those in so it will give me a little bit of red and some color in my greenery as well. So along with that I took a couple of uh, pieces of this greenery. It's different shade. It's a lighter green color. So I'm going to use it as just a filler and to give it some dimension, just some different colors uh, in this little bouquet that I'm making in the basket. So now is a good time, if you haven't already, to go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you're enjoying the content. Make sure you hit that bell next to the subscribe button. That will tell YouTube to let you know whenever I upload a video so you won't miss a single project. So I'm going to take this black and red checkered wired bow. I got this from Amazon and I love this because it's nice and wide. So I'm just making a regular little loop bow. I'm loving these because they're so easy to make and they look really good. So I just loop it around and then I'm going to take some of my floral wire and I'm going to wire it in the middle to hold it together. I'm just going to cut my ends so that they look really nice and give them a nice finish. And then I'm going to set that aside. I have some pine cones that I want to stick down in. I found these outside on the ground and cleaned them up. And now I'm going to use them in this little door display. I think it's going to look really pretty. And I love pine cones for the holidays, whether it's Thanksgiving or Christmas. It just adds so much to centerpieces and wreaths and I just love pine cones. So we're going to stick those in. I have some that are just all attached to a stick. This one got broken off so I'm going to take the leaf from the greenery with the berries that I got from Walmart and just kind of put that over it to cover up that piece because it just kind of stands out a little bit too much. So I glued that over it so you can't see it. And I'm taking a bamboo skewer and I'm going to wrap that around or wrap my bow uh, wire that I used to wire the middle. I'm going to wrap that around it and give it a little glue and then trim the bamboo down just a little bit to put inside of my basket. I got these really cute little signs from Walmart as well. They were only two or three dollars. And this one says Merry Christmas. So I'm going to tuck the little uh, ribbon underneath the bow there with the skewer so that it will hang down nicely. And then I'm going to fluff up my bow and make it look really pretty. And then it will be all finished. See what you think.
these frames are a free shack find and we're going to give them a quick makeover. So here I'm showing how I took the back off the frame because it was dirty and now I'm sanding the frame to give it a more distressed look and to bring forward some of that raw wood so that my antique wax would stick in those grooves and sanded spots. Just showing you what it looks like. Now I'm taking my antique wax and going over the frame and sealing it up and letting that wax get in all the grooves. Did that to both. Now I'm taking the paper and I was going to use my pencil and trace it out but I decided to flip it over and just kind of follow the edges and crease it with my thumb and then cut them out. And then I just copied the second, the first one for the second one um, to get that in there. I think that's going to look really cute. Very excited to see what it looks like. So I'm using Mod Podge in the middle of the frame to help stick my paper down nice and nice and secure and then I wipe it down and rub it in to get the, some of the bubbles out. As it dries they'll come out anyway. So smoothing that all out looks really good. And now I'm taking my Mod Podge and going over the top of the paper to seal it where it's going to be a tray. I thought it would be easier to clean if it had that nice Mod Podge um, seal on top of it. Alright, with that part done, now I'm taking my beads and my pegs and I'm using my antique wax and making them a, or giving them a stained look so that they kind of match the uh, frame itself. I think they came out really good. I really like how they did that. So I put it on and then peel it off or wipe it off. And now I'm gluing the feet on the bottom of the trays. I would suggest that you use some E6000 along with the hot glue or even a screw or nail to hold these in. I don't think hot glue alone is going to make these stick well enough for little feet for this project. I saved this little teapot with no lid from the trash and we're going to turn it into a cute little Christmas light. First thing I'm going to do is glue down with my E6000 and some hot glue the electric light and put it down into the pot and have that stick right down in the middle. Then I'm going to go ahead and start putting the, once that's dry, I'm going to start putting the ribbon on uh, first before I put anything else on. I'm just going to tie that on there and I glued a little bit, a few of the parts so that it would sit flat. And then I'm trimming my tails to make them look nice. And then I start adding, oh here I show uh, my pit berries and how I just kind of twirl them around my pencil. They make, they, it makes them look a little bit fuller. I don't always do it with all my things, uh, with all my crafts, but sometimes it looks fuller and, and you can use less by doing that. So here I'm just putting my greenery on and spreading everything out and making it look pretty and gluing that down and then I'm going to put my dipped bulb in the top let me know if you enjoyed these simple easy budget friendly 
projects down in the comments. If you have a favorite, I'd like to hear it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Check out the next video on your screen. I know you're going to love it. And have a great day.